What's up guys, this is Forest Knight, and this is day four of 100 Days of Code. Now, you're not going to see day one, two, and three, because I didn't record that, but I promise earlier, you know, this week, I started on Monday the 23rd, I did, you know, that's when I started the 100 Days of Code. So this is my first recording besides the intro, day four. Excuse the lighting, because all of my light bulbs up there except for one went out, which there's a fan with four lights in it went out, so I'm kind of using a desk lamp, but just... It's kind of crappy lighting, but it's late at night. I want to make the video. It's just going to be a short little video anyway. So let's talk about let's talk about what the what app I'm working on right now. So an app, uh, it's a Dreamlister app. This Dreamlister app is something that you you know say you have a bunch of items that you wish you have, or it's a goal, something that you dream of having, whether it's something achievable or not. You put it on this app and you have you know the ui is like you have an image of the item you have a title the title of the item you have the price of the item and then you have a description and then later on we'll get into making it so you can click on the item and it'll take you to a store to purchase that item so we'll get into that later but let me just talk about what i did these past three days because that is what leads up into what i did today so part one of the dream lister app is creating a data mo a data model I created the data model, added entities, generated NS managed object files, and a few other things, but those are the main topics that I went through with this app on that on that uh, part one. Part two was designing the views. So I added a timestamp to item model, but I also set up the UI. So the table view, segmented controller, I set up all the image, the title, the price, you know, I made a table view cell, so I can just repeat that down the line. And that was basically part two. Part three is connecting the views. So I connected the view to my code, set up boilerplate stuff to prepare for getting into core data because this this app is basically my introduction into, into core data. I know I keep saying data, data, whatever. But this is really my introduction into core data. And that's that's what mainly what this app is about to get me familiar with this stuff. Now part four is what we're going to dive into right now. It revolves around the FRC or fetched results controller. So let's go ahead and dive into it on the computer. I'll just show you a little bit and describe a little bit of what I did, what I've created. So the file we worked in tonight is the main VC file. And for the record, all of these files, you know, this code is going to be on my GitHub. It's linked down in the description box below if you're interested in that at all. Just figured I'd let you guys know that. And we really worked with NS Fetch Results Controller, and we're going to be fetching the item, and that's what it, that's mainly what this is about. Of course, we had to import core data and whatnot, but the main deal is that we created the attempt fetch function. Um, within that, we create a controller, a fetch request, and we want to, you know, fetch the item. We sorted the data, so the items will sort from newest to oldest that's why we did date sort uh, NS sort descriptor and we have the option from going let me click over here so newest this is a date sort and then we can uh, sort from price sort from title but right now we're just working on the date and then this is what we this is the main code to perform the fetch is right here we have more boilerplate code to begin updates and end updates and luckily for us, within Swift, we are able to use our cases insert, delete, update, and move. And what this means, it kind of describes what the FRC is for, or what I mean by FRC is the fetch results controller. What it's for. First off, you know, by definition, it provides the interface between core data and the UI table view objects. But in layman's term, and kind of like what else it does, is it allows you to access the data you need so you don't have to store 10,000 plus objects in your memory. So you can only store 10 objects in your memory at a time, so you don't have memory overload, you don't have leaks, whatever it may be. It helps your app run faster and everything like that. So that's why we do it this way. Instead of you know loading up 10,000 objects in our memory, we just have to load up 10 at a time or whatever it may be. So that's it, day four of 100 Days of Code. Let me know what you think of these videos. If you like it, if you don't, be honest. I. I will accept criticism well, and I'm going to end that video right here. Until next time, I'll see you tomorrow.